Greetings Earthlings, today we're reviewing a very cool condenser microphone. That was lame. <laughs> And today we're going to be reviewing this guy, the SE Electronics SE4400A condenser microphone, which I just think might be trying to rip off the AKG C414, but I don't know, you be the judge. If you do want to pick up this microphone though, it'll set you back around $500 redos. I'll throw some links down below. And for this test, we're connecting the mic direct to the 2i2 second gen, 48 volts turned on, and the gain set at about 1030 or 11. Not going to do any post-processing, but I might boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I did. Diddly did. I forgot. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. First up, everything comes in this very nice hard shell storage box. Of course, you will get the microphone. You get a very nice feeling shock mount, which does come with the 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. You get two pieces of paper, but if you do want the manual, you can find it on their website. And as you could see, I couldn't wait to start filming this to crumple up the stickers because you don't just get one, you get two of them. Uh, the, you, why? Why Why would you give us two stickers? What are you trying to pull here, SE? What are you doing? Then as far as the build quality, this microphone feels very nice, but it has a pretty unique feel to it. It is an all-metal construction, but it has this rubberized texture to it, which gives it a grippy feel and feels really nice in the hand. The metal grill does have a little bit of give to it, so I would be a little bit careful with that. And it also weighs in at 9.88 ounces or 280 grams. On the front of the microphone, you will also find a bunch of switches, which we will talk about in a second. And the rear of the microphone has absolutely nothing. Now let's go ahead and walk through what each of the switches on this microphone does. The first switch is a pad which gives you the option of negative 10 decibels or negative 20 decibels. Then you have a two-way high pass filter which gives you the option of 60 hertz roll off on the left or 120 hertz on the right. Then you have two polar pattern selection switches. Switch one allows you to select omnidirectional on the left hand side or figure eight on the right. And if you do want to use the other two polar patterns, you will need to have this first switch set to the center. And switch two has the option for cardioid on the left hand side or hypercardioid on the right hand side. Then we got the specs and this thing has a cardioid, hypercardioid, omnidirectional or figure eight polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has a sensitivity of around negative 32 decibels, a self noise of 16 dBA, a max SPL of 122 to 142 decibels, depending on the use of the pad. It has an impedance of 50 ohms and a phantom power requirement of 48 volts. Big surprise on that one. Now let's go ahead and test the sound of each of these different polar patterns. Now I'm on the omnidirectional polar pattern, which means it picks up audio equally 360 degrees around the microphone, and this is how the audio sounds. Now I'm on the figure eight polar pattern, which picks up audio in the front and in the rear of the microphone and has dead areas on the side, and this is how the audio sounds. Now I'm on the cardioid polar pattern, which mainly picks up audio in the front, and this is how the microphone sounds. And finally, I am on the hypercardioid polar pattern, which has a narrower pickup pattern in the front, but it does have an added lobe of sensitivity from the rear, but this is how the microphone sounds. Now I've switched back to the cardioid polar pattern and I am very close to the microphone to really accentuate the proximity effect and I do not currently have the high pass filter enabled, but this is how it sounds. Still at the exact same position, but I have now enabled the 60 hertz high pass filter and this is how it does at reducing some of that proximity effect. And now I have enabled the 120 hertz high pass filter, which does start to affect the tone of your voice quite drastically, but it also really helps curb some of that proximity effect to a much greater degree. Okay, right now I am speaking into the microphone on the omnidirectional polar pattern, spinning it around to show you what it sounds like as we move around the microphone's pattern. Now I'm on the figure eight pattern and I will move around to the 90 degree area to show you the dead spots from the side. We will move around to the back of the microphone, which should have another lobe of sensitivity. 
moving around to the second dead area, and then we will rotate and end at the front. Now I'm on the cardioid pattern, and I will move around to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Moving around to the rear of the microphone, and this is what it sounds like. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front. And finally, we are on the hypercardioid polar pattern, moving around to 90 degrees, show you what it sounds like here. Continuing around to the rear of the microphone, you can hear that added sensitivity back here. We will continue around to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much the keyboard it picks up on the cardioid polar pattern. Doing the exact same test, but I have switched over to the hypercardioid polar pattern, and this is how it performs. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect of this thing. One foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now let's test the plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. <laughs> stand a chance if I had lost my pants because you can't buy pizza dressed like that I don't know now with all of those tests out of the way I'm actually really impressed with this microphone but first up in terms of pros I really like the versatility of this microphone with the two pad options as well as the two high pass filter options I also think that it has four very usable polar patterns. The omnidirectional is a bit lacking in the low end, and I'm also not too keen on the hypercardioid polar pattern because it does have that cut to the presence frequencies right before it boosts it in the air. But all four are still pretty good compared to other multi-pattern microphones. And lastly, it comes with a really nice storage case, and the shock mount is surprisingly good at isolating it from bumps of the table. And then we got the cons, and the only issue that I really have with this microphone is that sometimes it can sound a little bit sibilant, sibilant, and I am accentuating that for demonstration purposes, but other than that, there's not much that I don't like about it. Then as far as my overall thoughts on the electric guitar, I think this gives a bit more of a vintage tone. Unlike popular guitar mics like the E609 or the SM57, this thing doesn't have a very big boost in the presence and treble region, leaving it sounding a little bit dull and also a little bit more mid-forward, but it still maintains a very tight low end and at no point does it get muddy sounding. Then on the acoustic, I think this offers a very nice and neutral tone. It does still have a punchy low end, which is really apparent on the downstrokes and the accents of that demonstration, but it also offers a very open top end without getting overbearing at any point because you're only getting maybe 1.5 or 2 decibels of boost in the treble and air frequencies. Then for singing, this microphone is just not going to cut through a mix, mainly because it is such a flat microphone throughout the majority of the frequency response graph. It does have a subtle boost to the treble and air frequencies, which tends to open it up and give a little bit of life to it. And I also really liked that it wasn't punching you in the face with any mids or presence, but it also wasn't cutting any of those frequencies out. So all around, I just thought it offered a very balanced and even sound for singing, and I was really impressed with it, and I really liked it for that application. And lastly, for spoken word, I just absolutely loved this thing. I like the fact that the mids are pretty much dead flat. You do get a little bit of a boost in the treble and air to breathe a little bit of life into your spoken word. And lastly, the bass and low frequencies aren't overwhelming. You can still get a really nice amount of proximity effect, but you also have two high pass filters on there to help curb any of that if you don't want that. And now, would I recommend this microphone? Yeah, yeah, I would. 
for music. I just think that it is an insanely versatile microphone with how neutral it is, as well as having the multiple polar patterns, the pads, the high pass filters. I just think that this is a very invaluable tool to have in your microphone locker. I would also recommend it for spoken word, especially if you're looking for a flat microphone, but you don't want a boring or dead flat microphone. This does have a little bit of shaping in the treble and error, which I've said about a thousand times, but I do think that that really gives a nice character to it. And that is going to do it for today. God, I really liked this microphone. I want to hear from you guys. What did you think of this thing? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. Hated it, thumbs down. If you want more videos like this, you can subscribe by clicking the logo beneath me or click that red subscribe button. Want to hang out in the Discord server? I'll throw a link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.